Hello guys, uh, welcome to Academic uh, Writing. Uh, my name is Brice Wilfried Obion Obono. Uh, so I will be your lecturer uh, for this class uh, this semester. As you guys know, our uh, beautiful city, uh, Daegu, uh, is going through uh, actually uh, uh, a big challenge right now. The coronavirus is actually uh, worldwide uh, we call it a pandemic right at this stage so for this reason uh, we will be having these classes online at least for the first uh, two weeks right uh, for the first two weeks so um, I'll be with you guys online in average around 40 to 45 minutes okay uh, today will be much shorter uh, since I'm only presenting the syllabus, uh, but from the next class, you should be online 45 minutes and I uh, will talk a little bit about the attendance, how the things uh, work, all right? So, uh, let me uh, move forward um, immediately here. Uh, just to present you the class, um, how it works, you have the title here, Academic Writing. I sent you already the, the syllabus. So you should have uh, the same information in front of your screen or you probably you print the PPT, that would be great. Uh, so uh, we will be meeting on Tuesday uh, from 3 to 4.15 p.m. Usually I will stop around uh, 4 p.m. The remaining 15 minutes, I usually stay extra time in class you know, to have this one-on-one -on -one chat with you guys and maybe answer to some questions. Uh, but it's not uh, limited to that. Uh, just know that uh, you can come to my office. I have an open door policy. If you come to my office in the Begongwan, uh, you will see uh, the room 419. Uh, if you see the light on, it means I'm inside. Uh, you can knock and come. Uh, it will always be a pleasure for me to uh, really see how I can better serve you at uh, this time. And uh, if for some reasons I'm not in the, uh, I'm not on campus, um, you know, or you need a specific appointment, uh, you can either call my office, 053-580-5870, okay? Or you can reach me to my cell phone number 010-7565-5284. Some people also add me, uh, uh, added me on uh, Kakao. I uh, welcome that. And uh, you, uh, you can do that. However, it's actually better to contact me uh, before uh, between 8 and 10 p.m. Okay. If you do it between uh, 8 and 10 p.m., I think things uh, should be okay for you and for me, all right? So, uh, this is just a very important class for you guys at the Kemio Adams College, usually for international business uh, students, uh, international trade students, and even students from other departments, I think, are welcome to take this class. It's really like technical uh, writing, all right? Very, very important. All right, so I wish I had taken this class when I was a freshman. Uh, my first language is not uh, English. So uh, if I had taken this class, I think today I'd probably be better off. I probably had not made a lot of uh, uh, mistakes. So I really hope that you have a good time with this class. Now, let's check... Uh, uh, things uh, together here. The outline of the objectives, all right? Uh, the course is designed to develop critical thinking and academic writing, all right? So uh, these are really the two main uh, elements that we have to look at uh, today, critical thinking and uh, how to actually present your ideas. And uh, really, I think the critical part will be when we will start writing this argumentative essay, all right? So that will be the last part, but let me not go ahead of myself. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, there will be some elements of grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, and so on. Personally, I uh, will not necessarily focus on the, the grammar, even though it's uh, very, very important. I will really focus on the, you know, the paraphrasing part. Very important, uh, and, and we'll speak about it, or, you know, to avoid plagiarism. How do you present ideas or opinions that are not necessarily yours, right? How, how do you present them without you copying and pasting, as we often see? Uh, with uh, students, all right? So it's really a foundational course. It's really, really a foundational course. Uh, so you can build the rest of your uh, uh, English uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, very important that you know how to write, okay? And another advice that I usually give uh, to students is uh, if you've never been in the habits of reading try to read every day all right try to read every day i will say try to read 20 minutes a day but what i usually do when i read novels and uh i want to i don't want to lose the idea i try to finish the chapter all right so you read a chapter a day and uh, so you have the full idea of what the author uh, was to convey as a message, all right? So getting the habit, in the habit of reading every day, all right? So in terms of objective, so this is the skills that I hope at the end of this lecture, uh, you will be able to develop. You learn how to run a cover letter, an email, you know, that will be the second part of our, uh, our journey together, an academic essay, talk about argumentative essay here, uh, following the APA guidelines. Uh, you know, last time I asked a student if they know what is APA, APA, everybody talks about APA. This is actually uh, the uh, American uh, uh, Psychologic uh, Association, right? So uh, they have like a, a, a guideline. So the formatting part, will be what we yeah, we will actually start with the formatting part before we go the cover letter email and argumentative essay all right incorporating citation following the APA style guide all right very very critical very very important so 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 we look at it you don't need to panic you know you just have to really follow the steps and you will always have your guideline with you a and even at my level that's what we do when we want to publish a paper, you know, we have guidelines, like the journal has specific guidelines that we need to follow, okay? And uh, one of the first things we're going to do, all right, you know, we're going to write your resume, but also write like a summary, you know, an abstract, you know, of an article. Uh, so this is actually very important. What do we understand about this article, all right? Uh, second part, process writing strategies for what? Planning, researching, and writing a, an essay, all right? How do you search, uh, how do you plan, and how do you write the essay? For our class, we will focus on argumentative essay, and uh, I will explain a little bit what I'm looking for uh, uh, when we will uh, reach that level. Just give me a few minutes. Uh, you know, you re we revise the essay, we give you some form of a feedback, all right? And so you will be able to uh, write for different purposes, all right? Uh, both formal and informal, all right? So very, very, uh, very, very important, okay? So, um, all right, let's go to the next page here. Um, the rules. We had the university, and I'm sure even in high school, you guys had some set of rules. You know, rules are actually very important so that we all on the same page, all right? We all on the same page here. So you will be expe expected to attend all classes and to be punctual. But for the first two weeks, uh, for the first two weeks, uh, we'll do it through 
uh, the CTL system, uh, right? Uh, so I will be uploading uh, the material. You go to my page, you will see that I will upload the material, uh, the PPT uh, about the, the weekly subject we'll be discussing. And you will also see a YouTube link uh, of um, the presentation. For example, right now, what I'm doing, I'm presenting, I'm presenting the, I'm presenting the, the syllabus. Next week, they will be our first chapter. All right. So before you actually, uh, you will have two things at your disposal. You will have the PPT. All right. Some notes. And then you will have the YouTube link. So uh, you have your notes like I have mine right now. Uh, you know, you can listen to me and you can take notes at the same time. That's the way we will be taking attendance by going to that link. We know that you did watch the video and then we put you present. All right. So and the advantage with the online system here is that uh, you can watch as often as you want. If something uh, was not clear, oh, you can just go back again and watch it again. All right. That's wonderful. That's, that's really, really great. Uh, you know, the downside is maybe that we don't have uh, the face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, contact where you're able to ask questions immediately and I'm able to give you an answer immediately, all right? Or some practical word work like uh, formatting based on the APA guideline that we need to be in the classroom, uh, you know, with computers, and then we do that exercise uh, together, all right? So now, this is not me. Well, basically, that's the way it works on campus here at the university. A class miss without viable excuse will carry penalty, all right? Usually 1% uh, penalty per absent, all right? And by absent, hmm, by absent, you know, if you come 15 minutes late, it's considered absent. But at this stage, at this stage for the first two weeks, I will not be uh, really regarding, you know, uh, when it comes to it. I think that when we get into the face-to-face -face in the classroom environment, then we can actually check that. But for the first time, you just want to make sure that you watch the video, or, you know, you're really following your class. Everything that you will be taught in class is the same material I'm presenting online. So it's not really, uh, it's not a bad system, all right? So you just have to go through your notes. You have access to the professor. And uh, if we need, we can also have a form of a conference, uh, what we call a Zoom meeting. We can all be there and we can do that exercise of the practical work and uh, just see what we get uh, from there. But like I said, the, the practicality is actually uh, very important. So you will have some assignments. Uh, the first one <laughs> will be a summary of, uh, of an article. And uh, so, you know, you will come with some points. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, and when we meet face to face, always important to bring all the required material in class, you know, especially the notes that I take, I took time to prepare uh, for you guys. So it's very, very important to bring them. So uh, I don't know why I put this one. All classroom functions will be conducted in English. I think that is self-explanatory, uh, but it's likely because I apply the same rules to all my classes and sometimes uh, confusion may take place. So we just want to make sure that uh, we understand that I will not be giving any <laughs> explanation in a language other than English, the English language. All right. So uh, if we are OK with that, we can actually uh, uh, just keep uh, uh, moving. All right. So now uh, the evaluation. Attendance, 
like I mentioned, it's very important. Okay? 20%. If you've never missed a class, you've never been late, you have 20 easy points. 20 easy points uh, that are available for you there. Okay? Uh, so, very, very important. But, you know, things happen. If you have, like, a medical condition, there is no problem. You just need to inform me. If something happens in the family, uh, an accident or anything that is uh, beyond, you know, your control, you know, we understand that it's not uh, the end of the world. Uh, you just need to uh, actually inform me and uh, we, we, go, we go from there. All right. So uh, then uh, paper number one, you know, that would be a summary writing. Uh, that would be like your first assignment. A really easy point, 20 point, right? You have a time to train you, do a couple of exercise before you do that first assignment. You have an article that you read and then you, you know, you write um, the, the abstract, okay? So I will also take a time to really show you how to write an abstract, okay? How to write an abstract. Uh, paper number two, uh, that will be the business writing. Mm, I'll explain in a minute. Uh, business writing has, it will be a project on a job application. Okay, so I will give you, all of you guys will be applying for one job, one summer job. Okay, uh, so you will apply for that job. So which means that you need to prepare your resume and you need to prepare your cover letter. But all of that will be taught in class, all right? I will not just ask you to do something that uh, you were not taught, and I will give you the time uh, to do it. But just remember that uh, late assignment, you always lose uh, some points in the process, so just be mindful of it, all right? So paper number three, actually I forgot to put paper number three, this is our last, the last paper, will be the argumentative essay, okay? So I will ask you to give your opinion about, uh, you know, uh, something that's going on in the, something that is going on the, in the society. And you give me your opinion, but you make an argument. And I will explain a little bit uh, some of these parts when I will give you the, the content. All right, so I'm using different sources uh, for uh, this class, but you know, the main book that I use, I took a lot of reference from this book, is this book, Academic Writing, a handbook for international students, all right? So you can have access to that book uh, at the library as well, if you are interested to go uh, through it, I think it's actually a good reference, all right? So, uh, and you know, I use other type of reference too, and from my own experience, so, just like a blend of different things that I hope uh, will be enough for you guys uh, to get a proper training so that by the end of the semester, uh, you feel equipped, right? Uh, and confident uh, when you actually start uh, your writing uh, journey. All right. So um, now let's look at the, the content here. So like you see, it's in three parts in red. The first part is the writing process, okay? The second part is the business writing, okay? And the third part is the argumentative essay. This is where a lot of points will come up. But like I said, coming to class alone, you already have uh, 20 easy points. Writing a very simple summary, you already have 20 easy points. So, uh, very, very important here. Now, as you see, paper one, writing a summary, an abstract. I'll show you how to do it. Uh, paper number two, summer job application, as we mentioned. And paper number three, thesis, antithesis, and, set, and, and synthesis, the argumentative essay. I'll explain in a minute. Okay? So, but what we're going to do, and this is where um, it can be a little bit challenging if we don't meet face to face, but we'll try, we'll see what we can do. Uh, so the first chapter, we look at reference and quotation based on the uh, APA guideline, all right? For example, uh, if you, 
if you read an article, you're giving your argument to TV, say you, you're writing a paper and you have some information from what other people wrote, all right, is not coming from you, okay? So you need to have the person's name as a reference. And if you need to say something or acknowledge what the person said, you know, we call it a quotation that you need to quote the person and I'll show you how to do it. This is why you see on the section um, six here, we talk about paraphrasing. You don't need to necessarily say it the same exact way. Then we look at the technicality, how to paraphrase uh, somebody, right? We paraphrase the person and we use the person's name in a, in a reference. Uh, the, the old reference, we talk about the name, we talk about the paper that the person wrote, we talk about the journal in which the paper was published, or the book, okay? So, and how uh, to write these references, okay? So, we look at all of that, and um, in number two here, we have the uh, APA format. This is just uh, something that we'll give to you so that we we show you exactly how you should present your paper. For example, when you write your summary, we say, okay, the title is written this way, uh, and then we have these many um, points uh, before you write the, the subtitle, uh, this is how you write your name, the reference of the school, and you know, all kind of things. So everything is prepared. I will give you all these information so that when I receive, your copies are received exactly the same, at least the front page. The front page should be the same uh, in terms of structure for everybody in the class. Okay? It should be the same for everybody on the class. Then we enter into background to writing. All right? Uh, how do we write uh, the specificity behind it? Uh, we talk about reading, I mentioned it earlier, right? Finding suitable sources, right? For example, I do a lot of research on acculturation and health. Acculturation is a form of uh, adaptation in a new environment, right? And then uh, we have the health uh, outcome. Look, you have two elements here. Acculturation, a form of adaptation, change of culture, right? And then we have health. Okay, in health, what are we talking about? General health? They just say, okay, I'm looking for something specific. I'm looking for hypertension. So we want to know, is there a relationship between acculturation and hypertension? All right. And then you look at the acculturation variables or factors. For example, they say, oh, you know, the longer a person stay in a foreign country, the likely this person may develop hypertension. Is it true? So for that, you need to find suitable sources, all right? Uh, different information that allow you to make uh, really your opinion about the subject, all right? For example, we ask the question, all right? Does acculturation uh, make immigrant sick all right so we ask that question we want to know is it true is it true that the longer foreigners stay in korea the likely they had to develop uh, the likely they will develop hypertension is it true so for that we look at different sources all right Validate the sources, publish sources, and I will tell you with what kind of sources we should look at. All right, don't go into somebody's blog who's writing blog from his basement and use his source as a scientific uh, source, right? We don't do that, right? We really want uh, recognize sources. Oftentimes, we prefer peer review sources, right? Uh, sources that have been verified, the experiment have been checked and properly done, and uh, we have two or three people, uh, two or three references that are confirming the same thing. 
okay so number five uh, very very important uh, number five uh, i spoke about it already avoid plagiarism okay so uh, we have a, a plagiarism check you know we can just scan your paper and we know that oh okay uh, you probably copy everything from from google or from a book so this is why paraphrasing is actually key right we want to avoid plagiarism so we have to say maybe the same thing in a different way okay so in general we say okay you write a text if the plagiarism level is below 30 percent we say okay it's okay i mean in some other places depending on the letter of your article people will say okay we just go up to 10 percent all right so uh, i trust that you guys uh, won't be entering into the game of just copy paste right so what we need to do is to learn you know to learn how to write so when you learn it, you know how to you learn how to paraphrase, then uh, you can write your own summary, right? Uh, and I will have uh, I will take a time to actually teach again how to write an abstract. I even do that for uh, graduate school students. You know, graduate school students are actually uh, expected uh, to write a scientific paper, peer review. Uh, in peer review journals so uh, writing an abstract or writing uh, the body of uh, uh, of your text uh, writing an introduction the conclusion what is the conclusion is all about all these things are very important how do I organize uh, my paragraphs all right how do I organize my paragraphs are they following uh, each other all right so and I'm telling you you know Usually, we write the introduction last. Contrary to popular belief, oftentimes people start writing the introduction, all right? But often, what we recommend is to actually write the introduction almost, uh, almost last, the introduction and the conclusion are the things that we write last, okay? So, this, is, this will be actually the first part, all right? This will actually be the first part. Very, very important. Now, the second part is business writing. It's business writing. Um, and in business writing, this should be actually the easiest part of all. Hopefully, you already have uh, the background in terms of uh, the technicality, how to write, how to paraphrase, how to... Uh, you know, have your paragraphs uh, be in a logical order, all right? Then uh, the exercise that we will be doing is a job application. So, but before we do it, we will learn how to write a resume, all right? We call it curriculum vitae, basically your life. What did you do? Most of you are freshmen right which is great so a lot of you don't necessarily have a lot of work uh, experience but some of you work for example in coffee shop maybe you did some voluntary work all right maybe at this time during the crisis in um, in Degu now the coronavirus maybe you are a volunteer to help here and there uh, so we, we there are many things that you have been doing uh, so even though the job was not giving you any uh, any money but it's still some skills that you have developed so with your resume will have you know your name what you did your education uh, where did you go to school and the skills one of the skills that I'm sure that uh, all of you guys uh, have is you know how to use Microsoft Office right you probably know how to use PowerPoint, Excel. These are good computer skills, all right? A lot of you guys uh, speak perfect English, uh, probably better than mine. And uh, so you say, okay, I'm bilingual. I speak fluent English. 
and French, uh, and uh, and Korean in your case. In my case, it's English and French. Okay, French better than English, of course. So these these are skills that you put on your resume, where you wanna you know get the attention of the person who's offering uh, the job to actually hire you and give you an opportunity uh, to work an opportunity to develop more skills all right so it's true my acquire skills that i was able to get a job at Kimia university i tell you one thing i'm uh, teaching nutrition but you can look at it and just say if I did not learn to speak English, I will not be able to have this opportunity to teach you guys today. Uh, French being my uh, first language, and I speak another African language. Um, I was born in Gabon, so I speak Fang, F-A-N-G. So that's my mother tongue. So if I had, if I was only speaking Fang, I would not have the opportunity. For example, to study in Canada. I stayed in Canada for 10 years, so I acquired some skills there and I had to learn English as a third language. Okay? So now you're putting all these skills to work for you when you are applying for a job. Okay? So we 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 really, really gonna learn uh, good things uh, this semester and uh, I'm already excited. Uh, how things uh, are going to go so hopefully uh, you guys will be uh, as excited as I am uh, right now it's gonna be great it's gonna be great okay now the last part the last part is the argumentative essay okay uh, you guys are <laughs> in trade and uh, international international trade international business and uh, international relations yeah so sometimes you will be confronted to giving your position into certain things so now uh, but the part that I will present it to you is what we call the thesis the antithesis and the, the synthesis all right so where in the thesis uh, you will present what it is and what is known and what is maybe acceptable. But then the antithesis come and somehow rebuke what was presented at the, in the first place. And the sentences actually bring the whole thing uh, together. In the sentences, you can actually take your final stand, final position on the controversy, on the problem, or you can leave it open, right? You can leave it open uh, for another subject, for a new thesis, all right? So it's going to be uh, very, very interesting because we, we talk a lot about different problems in the society right now. And uh, one of the questions we asked last year is, uh, uh, should a Korean woman you know, also do military service uh, as men uh, do, right? These are interesting questions. Uh, so, and then we want to know your opinion about it. So you need to defend uh, your position. But even when you have a position, it's always important to bring a counter argument uh, to it. Uh, and inside of the counter argument, you can rebuke again the counter argument all right so to make your argument even stronger so what does it mean it means that you already anticipating what people will say regarding your position so in the counter argument you have the opportunity to rebuke it again and come up with a stronger synthesis. Remember, when people read you, especially if they read a long text, even when they listen to you, they often remember 
strongly your last words. So your conclusion or your sentences has to really be a strong position that people will actually uh, remember. So they know, oh, okay, finally the stent is on that. But like I said, you can also somehow deviate and open uh, and come up with a new proposal. All right? For example, you may be for a woman to enter military service, but you may conclude by saying that woman can enter military service, but we can alleviate the length of the military service. So that instead of going for two, three years, can they do it for a year? After you have already presented the arguments and the counter arguments. All right? So you have tons of opportunities to actually present your position or come with a better proposal. So it's going to be really, really exciting. And uh, we have all these subjects for you guys. So it will be very, very critical that we spend time, uh, you know, educating ourselves, training ourselves, and really learn uh, the technicality of how to write, how to present your ideas. Okay. And when we know how to present these ideas, uh, you know, often time we find a diplomatic way not to frustrate people. And this is why that new proposal oftentimes find a balance between two extreme positions. All right. So it's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be great. So this is actually what we will be looking for this year. Uh, very important uh, that I see you guys in two weeks. Hopefully we keep crossing our fingers. We keep praying that uh, the coronavirus uh, will be um, uh, being behind us, all right? Uh, so uh, we, we watch that, so stay, um, uh, stay safe, all right? Uh, as you know, you don't need to go to uh, unnecessary gathering of a thousand people. Uh, eat well, exercise. If you can at home, uh, you can have some fresh air as well, okay? So, uh, and uh, I will be sending the first chapter uh, for you guys, and then uh, we go uh, we go from there. Once again, you have uh, my phone number, uh, you have my email address. If you have uh, any questions, feel free, feel free to contact me, and it will be a pleasure for me uh, to actually serve you. Uh, so this class is actually very technical. I want to remind you guys again. So uh, please uh, take really the necessary time, uh, take the necessary time uh, to, to read and more than that, the necessary time to understand what's going on, all right? Uh, because points will be given in specific uh, area. And uh, even when I give the assignments, I will give you the grading sheet so that when you write, you know where you, you gain your points and you know where you, you know where you lose your points. Okay. Just to remind you guys, uh, we'll be meeting on Tuesday from 3 to 4 15 PM, uh, on Friday from 12 to 1 15 PM. Uh, the online class is only 40 to 45 minutes. Okay. And, uh, I have, like I said, an open door policy, contact me anytime uh, uh, you want to. So have a great day and uh, hopefully I see you guys uh, pretty soon. All right.